Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Redrich, probably saying that wrong, Cool, K U H L, Cool, K C 808A10A. And I do understand that that is a bit of a mouthful. So, what I will say is this is a Fridrich air conditioning unit that is labeled as being either a in wall, as I have here, or window unit. Now, I picked this particular unit because, well, one, moved, new house, had Fridrich air conditioning units, and I wanted something that fit in the cutout. I didn't want to have to make the cutout any bigger. So I went to the store, found out, well, they, air conditioner people, because I don't want to keep saying that name wrong, have not really changed the size of their air conditioning units since inception. So this unit would fit in here. Now, I was given two options. There was this unit and another unit, which is billed as cheaper, not made in America. This is made in America. And the cheaper unit was same company, but built elsewhere. However, the reason I went with this particular model instead of that model is the other model in question, the vent was over here on the side and could oscillate like this. But because these are in wall under a window, and the one in my master bedroom, because I have two, I have this one in a secondary bedroom and then a master, I needed it to be able to get up and over my bed. So I needed the vents up here, not on the side. Sadly, that also costs $300 more. This unit costs $300 more than that cheaper unit. So if you are going out hunting and you can live with that side vent and not made in America, save $300. If not, and you're in the same boat that I am, where you want the vents up here and you need something that fits then we're going to talk about this model because while it was more expensive, it has more goodies in my opinion and is a good air conditioner. Now, this is the 115 volt model. This particular model can come in either 8,000 BTUs, 12,000 BTUs and up to, I believe, 24,000 BTUs for this. I ended up going with the 8,000 BTU models because again, the air conditioner that I was referencing before was a earlier model, like 20 plus years older than this model and it was only a 5,000 BTU unit and it was not cutting it. I mean, it was, it was bad. My, it was just, it was bad. So the first, actually the first thing that we did when we moved here was get new air conditioners, even though the garage door opener video over there says I did otherwise. This was the first thing we did because we needed this. And let me tell you, 8,000 and 8,000, so 16,000 BTUs on my second floor, awesome. Helps cool greatly. Now, as we talked about, this particular unit is an 8,000 BTU unit. It has a single vent across the top here uh, with adjusters. So you cannot adjust these out here. The fins can move from left to right and up and down, but using this only. Now, this unit does come with its own wall sleeve. So if the wall sleeve that you have previously is a little banged up, they will have a replacement wall sleeve here and you'll be good to go. Now, it also, does come with a remote. We'll try and bring that into focus. There we go. Uh, which controls power, mode, fan, speed, and then up and down. Now it is just kind of a rubberized texture. It does come with batteries. The batteries are junk and this one died within a week. The one weird thing I will say with Frederick is uh, the display over there, but we'll get to that in a minute because one, if you've never seen an, an air conditioner like this, there's no grill up front. So one, they can be stylized, so you can pick a color to your choosing, which includes the top and the front. Obviously, this is the basic white. However, you might be asking, well, where's the vent? How does air get in here? Well, there's actually side vents, and this front cover pops down. So in here, one, my video now looks horribly crooked, apparently, and two, this is how you access your filters. Now, this particular model comes with an extra charcoal filter here that's supposed to add extra dust and filtering protections. This pops off and then there's your normal filter behind that. Both can be accessed just by lifting up on a little tab here and then pulled off. This one you can vacuum, the other one says you should wash it, but just like my other one, you vacuum it, you're good to go, you put it back in. Now, the reason that I pop this down, aside from just talking about the filters, is that there are extra buttons in here, a menu and a back button. This is where things get a little weird for me because one, 
when you're trying to navigate certain menus, you actually need these buttons as opposed to up here. The buttons up here are kind of limited in what they can do. And in my opinion, a little too sensitive. So make sure you get new remote batteries and use the remote instead. Now, while there is no Energy Star stamp on this, it is supposed to be Energy Star approved as proven by this sheet that comes with it saying that it is Energy Star and you know, $65 a year to run. Also, if you're in Canada, there's your 12.0 qualification. So this is Energy Star and just to test it, I ran some tests, obviously, of just plugged in and idling. This unit will use 0.08 watts of power. If you have the fan in the low setting, it uses 3.5. If you have it in the high setting, it uses 92.2. Now, for the compressor using air conditioning, obviously that's why you get this, not just for a fan. So fan in high and compressor running, it is 711 watts. So yes, that is a lot, but it is actually less than my 8,000 BTU unit Comfort Air, which I had in my condo. So same BTU, same output, less power. Now, before I actually start talking about the air conditioner itself and the dial over there, I'm gonna talk about some of the buzzwords that came with this air conditioner. Uh, never having had one like this, there was a lot that I was learning because they have like pretty much talking points where it's quiet master technology. So that includes sound blocking insulation, steel inner walls, enclosed fan motor, solid steel blower wheel house, and more. So what I can say about that, aside from all of the sell you the air conditioner talk, it is actually a fairly quiet air conditioner. It does not rattle my wall like my Comfort Air did. The compressor with the fan on high, I really don't hear the air compressor to turn on the air conditioning portion on and off. I don't really hear that. And with my old air conditioner, you knew when the air conditioner was kicking on because you heard it and you felt it. So whether all of the actual buzzy talkie points are worth it, I can't say for sure, but I can say it actually is a fairly quiet air conditioner for the BTU output and its size. So buzzwords aside, reasonably quiet. For me, I don't need an absolutely quiet air conditioning. In fact, I prefer it to be a little noisier uh, because I like to use it as a sound generator. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you'll probably hear a little bit of the air conditioner. I'm going to try to get it out of the way when we zoom in over here to show you the display. So why don't we zoom in now and talk about the actual functionality of the air conditioner. All right, so hopefully the air blowing, I'm actually going to turn the vents so that they hopefully don't blow on the mic while we're doing this. So you've got your power button here, which has to be tapped twice on both the unit and the remote itself in order to turn it on. Now tapping once will bring up the display. If the air conditioner was on, there'd be information here. Now there is an LED display here uh, that will turn itself off after 20 seconds, which I greatly appreciate because I don't have to cover it with a sock in the middle of the night like I did with my other air conditioner. Now we're not gonna wait the 20 seconds for that to power down. There you go. I will say the buttons on the, uh, on the unit itself are rather mushy. Uh, I don't particularly care for them, so that's why I said use the remote. So we're gonna double tap to start. And here we go. You will notice that it is on high fan right now. We can change the speed. And that's now turning to low. Now, when you adjust the fan speed, it's rather odd. It quiets down, it like motors down and then motors back up. I've never had an air conditioner do that before. So you have fan here, on or auto. Auto means it will pick the correct speed for you. And then you have cool or fan only. And then here you have temperature. So right now it's trying to cool to 72. I want it to cool lower than that. And you can see I'm really kind of having to push that to have it actually adjust anything. Now that's just an IR blaster for the remote that comes with it. But you will notice now well, there's extra functionality that this does. You have to use those sub menus in that front panel to get to it. So let me open it up again and show you some of those options. All right, so we've got the extra options open down here. So first being menu, this is limit. What limit will do is you can choose the lowest and the highest that you want this to be. And I do realize that that light on back there is kind of blocking it. Uh, that's 72 degrees and 66 being low. So you can have it 
as high as 7260 is the lowest that it can go. Click the menu button again down here again. Menu, so we're back to the limit. Using the directional buttons here, we can navigate to time. Pressing menu button will allow you to set the time as well as what temperature you want it at that time. So you can actually go through and program this for several different times of day to kind of give yourself like an energy star-ish feel. Now you'll see since I set a time, it tried to go back to what I had it set for, which is why now it says override. We're gonna go back to time. So from time, we are now going to move on to Fahrenheit or Celsius. Clicking menu will allow you to switch between the two. Lock is if you wanted to lock this to prevent anybody else from making changes to it. So dads out there who lock down their thermostats, this is how you lock down your air conditioner. Connect. I have mixed feelings about Connect in that I was hoping that this is a Wi-Fi unit. Believe it or not, this unit has Wi-Fi without having to have an extra peripheral. However, in my attempts to connect this unit to Wi-Fi, I spent 45 minutes trying to connect this to Wi-Fi. Now, I will say, I was able to actually connect this to my Wi-Fi network. I used the Thing app over here, which shows that it was on my network. However, connecting it to the Frederick Connect system was impossible. I tried on my computer. I tried on my cell phone. I tried this unit. I tried the unit in my master bedroom. I tried using a Wi-Fi signal booster. Nothing I did would allow this unit to connect to Wi-Fi. So thankfully, I was, because over here there is an icon for Wi-Fi, you can't see it, but when it was connected to the Wi-Fi, it showed up there. I tricked the unit into jumping off my Wi-Fi because I don't want it sitting on my Wi-Fi if I can't do anything with it by entering the wrong SSID and password. So maybe by the time you're looking at this, they will have fixed that issue. But if they haven't, don't get this unit for Wi-Fi. It's a good unit, but the Wi-Fi is garbage. Moving on from Connect, we have Diagnostic. So you can run a diagnostic if you ever run into a problem because this is pretty much a computer with an air conditioner attached. That's how I'm gonna describe it. And then coming back, we come back to Limit. So those are all the, those are all the sub menus that you can get to from the control panel here. So all in all, would I recommend the Friedrich Kuhl KC808 blah, 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 blah. Yes, it is a good air conditioner, especially if you need one that fits in a specific size hole and it already exists. You might as well use something that fits and has good output. Wish the price was a little cheaper. I wish that it actually did connect to Wi-Fi because I would love to not have to use that sub menu because that sub menu is a nightmare to navigate. Just keep that in mind. Use the remote that comes with it. Avoid the sub menu at all costs. So just turn it on, turn it off. There doesn't seem to be any energy saver mode, which concerns me, but normally I would just keep these on anyway. Uh, meaning, so energy saver, you turn that on, when it reaches a temperature, it turns the unit off completely. Uh, the closest you can get is auto, which is changing the speed of the fans, and that's it. It will remain on. So keep that in mind when looking at this particular unit. And again, that unit that had the side mounted there, $300 cheaper. Not a bad unit, wish it was cheaper, but for what you get, I like it. And let me tell you, it has been a godsend because as of today, I'm of course filming this in 90 degree weather on the second floor and can't have this on for the entire time because you won't be able to hear me. But recommend do your shopping, uh, shop around. We didn't shop around, we probably could have gotten it a little cheaper. I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, Thanks for watching.